It's not experimenting. It's just, it's just you're just uh, open-minded, and you know, hey, who's to say? You know, come on. So uh, now I'm lost in kissing gut. I can't. Where am I? Where was? Oh, so. We need a girl, so they brought the girls in to be damsels in distress, farmers' daughters, riverboat captains' daughters, and they were, and they were, but these girls would show up literally shaking, because Mr. T was a scary guy if you didn't know him, and he had that, he could be scary if he wanted to, and I saw him do it sometimes, but basically he was a pussycat, and George was just, could be very charming, and so, but these girls would show up, and their agent would warn them, and everybody's, oh my God, you're going to do that show? No, no, no. Those guys, they're so mean, they're so awful. So these girls would show up and they're 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 just shaking. They're shaking. And they come out of they come out of makeup and wardrobe and they come on the set and they're just and when they leave, seven days later they're crying. They don't want to go. They're hugging Mr. T, hugging George, giving me their phone number. They're just And they're, and they're saying, this is, we've never been treated so nice, and we're gonna... But you see, that's the paradox. That's, that's because we were gentlemen, and we loved ladies, and we treated them with the utmost respect, and they had a great time, and they were the only ladies, and they, everybody, you know, went out of their way to make them feel comfortable. And, and, uh, and also, like, for instance, back in, that, those, back in those days, women, they wanted the girls all to look like, uh, Daisy May, you know, like Catherine Bach on, on, uh, on what? Thunder Road, what's it called? Dukes of Hazard. Dukes of Hazard. Jesus, God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, John. I can remember your name, but I can't. Um, yeah, Catherine Bach, didn't she wear those skimpy little things and lots of cleavage and really skin tight? So whenever we had a girl, the wardrobe would put him in the little things and this, because this is the network mentality, this is sexy. A woman is not sexy, she's got little skin tight things, and that's sexy. You know, it's, 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 so it drove us crazy. George, me, T. So, they would come out of, they would come into these really attractive ladies, they go into wardrobe, they come out, and they'd look like, uh, Female impersonators. Too much, you know, too much. It gets in the way of it. So we would send it back to wardrobe. George, mainly, because George was sort of the boss. He says, no, no. And of course, they'd go back. And this pissed off the network, it pissed off the producers. And of course, the uh, ladies loved it. Oh. So they come out, if they were the daughter of a riverboat captain, they came out looking like the daughter of a riverboat captain. They were still beautiful and sexy, and they still had, but they had clothes that looked like maybe they could have been living in the jungle instead of you know, this warped notion of what sexy is. So anyway, so that didn't, that didn't uh, uh, make anybody happy. But, so, shall we, uh, shall I babble on or, Babylon. I've been to Babylon. <laughs> or, I have a question. Would you like to answer some questions from some We've of the people We've only got five more minutes. <laughs> That's what my girlfriends used to say. In a relationship, they go, you know, you've only got five more days. This better pick up or I'm... I'm, I'm where's my son? Is he here? No, yeah. My son is here with me. Do you have you all met my son, Roland Benedict? He, that's him right there. Guy. My son, sons are my are the best part of me. The best part of me. I can die a happy man tomorrow. I shouldn't say that too loud. It might be. Yeah. yeah, I devoted the last 20 years. That's what I've been doing. I've been raising children. Not now. They're raised. They're grown. But for a while, I was committed to it. Not because anybody made me, but because I found it really interesting. 
and I've kind of done a lot of other things, and I'm, I'm a bit of a dabbler. I go off in different... I got into acting because I got drunk in college my freshman year, and there were... Do you know this story? They were freshman year, and they were having... I was going to major in music, so I'm very... I, I was very musical, and I played the trombone, and I wanted to be a composer. So I'm in... So <coughs> walking by with my football... I played football. I had a college football college, American football scholarship. Walking by the, the theater... I'd never been in a theater, I'd never seen a stage play, I'd been to many movies, never watched TV. So, because I grew up in a little town in Montana, so I had no exposure and no interest, but we're walking by the theater with three of my buddies, and it said, Spring Musical Auditions. And we're walking by, and I said, you know, I could do that. And they started, I said, what? I said, I can, go, I, can, I can do that. I can go in and sing a song in there in that place. So they all offered up $5 or what it was, I remember. One of the guys that was there at the time, I just saw, I was a dear friend then, and we got back in touch, and he just passed away a month ago. It's very sad for me. But Andy Pollard, a wonderful guy. And, and he was confirming my story when, when, you know, this was last September, we were talking. He said, yeah, I remember, I remember. And we thought, oh, my God. Because it was like going into a house of ill repute or something, you know, the theater. We saw theater people on campus, you know, they had a lot, and they kind of walked with their books like this. They were always laughing and singing and earrings and piercings and stuff that weren't done. And we were football players, and they were always so happy. And, and you know, there was some pretty girls there, but it was just kind of weird. Although they always seemed to be, you know, so I went in, but I sang, I could sing, you know, I liked singing, I sang in choirs, and so, so that was my deal, I was going to make 20 bucks, so I went in and walked out, it was one of the scariest things I ever did in my life. I won't go deep, I can remember it in detail, but, so they gave me the thing, I went up and sang, and I didn't have, do you have something to sing? I said, no, and I said, oh, I'll sing from the song, so I, from the show. So I sang the song, and then they said, oh, oh, let's read some lines. Now, mind you, I don't know what any of this means, read some lines, I don't know. But then they hand me a script, and I go, oh, oh. So they said, so you're, you're going to be Gaylord Ravenel, and this is it. So I read this, so this is the first act I ever did. So I don't even know, I don't know what I'm doing, I'm just going, you know. Oh, whatever, but I just read, okay, thank you, and I left, I went outside, and oh my God, they're laughing, and I forgot about it, it was Saturday, Sunday morning, Brian O'Reilly, a theater major, never spoke to this guy, freshman dorm, big, tall, skinny guy, he goes, come to walk you down, he goes, he says, Dirk, Dirk, congratulations, I go, what, what, he says, you got the lead, you got the lead, I said, and I said, uh, the lead, Gaylord Ravenel. You're playing Gaylord Ravenel. And I, oh God. Then I went, oh, oh, oh no, oh my God, no. So I was, oh God. So Monday I went, I got nauseous. I was nauseous. I was so nervous. And my friends are laughing. I said, don't worry. Just go tell him you can. And so I went to the professor and said, I can't. I have no interest, and I don't want to. And then he said, No, your words will start Wednesday. You're fine. You'll be there Wednesday. Head of the department. And I'm, I'm in a really foreign territory, and I'm thinking, so then they're laughing. They said, no, just go. You're going to be so terrible. They'll have to get rid of you. So I went Wednesday, rehearsal, and that was it. And, I, and here I am. But I had no desire. Yeah, yeah. Boring the shit out of you with that stuff. You know, no, it's funny because a lot of, most, all the actors I met, from the time they were this high, they freaking knew. I didn't. I did not only didn't know, I never really was going to do it when I got out of college. I mean, I did it in college, I was successful, and I won an award for Best Actor of the Year, my junior year or something. And I enjoyed it. I really liked it. The, I loved, I went in, the minute rehearsal started, it was like I'd been doing it my whole life. I loved the rehearsal, the make-believe. It's just make-believe. It's what I did when I was 12. I used to be Roy Rogers or Ivanhoe, Sir Ivanhoe, with the sword. I think Robin Hood, I liked Robin Hood. So I was always pretending, pretending like my son Roland could be an actor, you know, he has, he has that. And my other son is an actor, George. But I, but it was, you know, it's great when you're 10 or 12. It's not a profession for anybody that's an adult, really. It's, it's for children. It's great. But so I, and then I got out and I went to the RADA, Royal Academy. They came to the United States with their teachers. The head of RADA, John Fernald, came over and I went to that and I did that. And I was going to be a theater actor. And then, 
You know, one mistake led to another, and I ended up in TV, and then I, one mistake led to another, and then I was in movies, and I never got back to the theater, and then I ended up a TV star just because I needed to make some, 